Welcome back to Torres Journeys. Today, our adventure is now under the skies of friendly Canada. In today's video, it takes us on an exhilarating ride through the stunning landscapes of Canada's New Brunswick Providence. We meet our first Canadian host near St. John before venturing along the jaw-dropping Fundy Trail Parkway and we soak in the coastal charm of Peggy's Cove. Peggy's Cove, with its iconic lighthouse perched on the rugged coastline, is a must-see. We'll explore this postcard-perfect village and witness its unforgettable charm. But our journey doesn't stop here. We will continue south to the UNESCO World Heritage Town of Lunenburg, known for its colorful buildings, historic waterfront, and rich time marine heritage. Lunenburg's bustling harbor and lively streets will captivate our senses, offering a glimpse into Canada's seafaring pasts. So, fasten your helmets and join us as we explore the marine time gems of Canada's eastern provinces. From St. John to Peggy's Cove and beyond, it's a ride you won't want to miss. All on today's Torres Journeys. As we crossed into Canada from Lubeck, Maine, we knew we were in for a unique adventure. Our journey would take us to the charming coastal landscapes of New Brunswick. Our first leg involved a scenic ferry ride to Deer Island, where the salty sea breeze and shimmering waters welcomed us to this marine time wonderland. Well, we made it over here to Canada. I think we should hold the bike. This thing squirms around a lot. We made it into Canada pretty easy, basic questions. And uh, we made the ferry just in time. There was a couple of bikes behind us and it takes a little bit of time to get your helmets off on so they didn't quite catch us. Uh, so we catch this ferry, $20, I think it's Canadian. Then we'll go across to Deer Island, catch another ferry, which is free. It's about an hour outside of St. John. So we'll go to our host, which is there. And I think they're gonna have hamburgers for us tonight. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Arriving on Deer Island, the anticipation of the journey ahead filled the air. Our next ferry ride would take us deeper into the heart of New Brunswick. The trip across Deer Island should have taken about 15 to 20 minutes. But like always, we got a little lost. At Cummings Cove, you can take a left or a right. Well, we took a right, but then we knew it was kind of wrong, so we turned around and we went back the other way, which was just a big loop either way. But about 25 to 30 minutes later, we did arrive across the island to Deer Island Ferry, where we would now be on our way to the mainland of New Brunswick. We're on our final ferry here, crossing on Deer Island to the mainland, and we have about an hour to go until St. John's, where our host is waiting for us. It's been a pretty good time. Riding through the picturesque coastal roads towards St. John, we couldn't help but be mesmerized by the beauty of New Brunswick's landscape. Our evening with our kind host was filled with laughter, great conversations, and the simple pleasures of hamburgers and hot dogs. They shared their own motorcycle adventures and then, like true road warriors, they offered us a priceless gem, a hidden motorcycle route. The Fundy Trail unfolded before us like a treasure trove of adventure. Each curve of the road held the promise of exhilarating views, and we couldn't help but be swept away by the beauty of the rugged coastline. Right now we started riding on Fundy Trail here in Canada. Uh, we're gonna do a few stops along the way, just checking out the area so we can see if we can show you more. As we rode along the windy curves of the Fundy Trail, we were on a dual mission. First, we couldn't get enough of these breathtaking scenic views that stretch over the cliffs and to the sea below. Second, we were on a quest to find that perfect location to deploy our trusty drone, which we were still cautiously navigating through the skies. Double the adventure, double the thrill. Yeah. 
Navigating the Fundy Trail, we had a tight schedule but couldn't resist the temptation to discover some more hidden gems. Along the route, we heard about fantastic walking trails leading to mesmerizing viewpoints like Fuller Falls, Melvin Beach, and Long Beach. There are waterfalls along the Fundy Trail worth seeing as well, like Dixon Falls and Laverty Falls, with their cascading waters creating enchanting displays of Mother Nature. Regrettably, our time was limited, and we couldn't explore all these attractions on this journey. Still, knowing they exist and are waiting to be discovered adds on an exciting layer to our future adventures. As we left the enchanting Fundy Trail behind, the landscapes of New Brunswick embraced us with open arms. Rolling hills covered in lush greenery stretched as far as the eye could see, and the scent of the sea lingered in the air. It was a sight to behold, with quaint coastal villages dotting the horizon. Hopeswell Rocks is where we are now and when the tides all the way out you can see the ocean floor and well let's just don't tell you let's just show you first a pit stop and this here shows you the difference how far the water goes up it's almost three stories I think they say it's incredible see the line right there of the water basically this is your beach amazing <laughs> that's where everybody walks down to right there you can see them down there so in order to ride the shuttle it's about a 15 to 20 minute walk but that means 40 minutes for us round trip. And this is a traveling day, so we need to get moving. Otherwise, it's $2 per way, uh, Canadian. It's about $1.75 or so, I don't know. And shuttle takes you right here, takes you down and back to here. Now I sent Julia off to get the tokens. I'm wondering if she's gonna buy two or four. She may not know. As we took the golf cart shuttle down to Hopeswell Rocks, the anticipation was building. We wondered just how enormous would they appear as we stood before them. Would they live up to their reputation as one of the world's natural wonders? The excitement was building. As we got closer, we couldn't help but imagine the scale of these incredible rock formations. Uh, this shows you the tides. High tide and low tide, which is okay, right no, now. No. We have arrived. Everyone's feet going up. I think if they go out there, obviously it's yeah. where it all gets dark and dirty. We're not doing that part. No. All right, where shall we set up our tripoder? Oh, I see. They go down there and maybe over here. <clears throat> All right, come over here. Yeah, here. This will be our picture spot, Julia. This will be our picture spot. All right, why she sets that up? Because she's so good at it. Mm. I'll just take it all in.
As our time came to an end here at Hopeswell Rock, we couldn't resist the opportunity for one last spectacular view. With our trusty drone soaring over the iconic Hopeswell's Rock, we captured this breathtaking moment from the air. Standing tall and proud, these colossal rock formations are a testament to the incredible power of nature. Carved by the highest tides on the planet, they stand as centennials of time, guarding the secret of the bay's ever-changing shores. With this stunning aerial perspective, we say farewell to Hopeswell's rocks, knowing that our adventure is far from over. As we continued our journey northward, we found ourselves passing through Moncton, a necessary route to travel around the Bay of Fundy and into Nova Scotia. This particular stretch of our trip was known for its notorious fast winds, which, truth be told, weren't the most enjoyable for us on our large motorcycle. Our evening was spent with our gracious hosts just outside of Halifax. Their property was a breath of fresh air, quite literally. As we toured their land, we came across a small, serene pond where ducks peacefully glided and a gentle stream meandered through the landscape. It was a moment that made me rethink why I'm drawn to city living in the first place. The following morning, we were up early, ready to continue our adventure. Our route took us south through the stunning landscapes of Nova Scotia, each mile reaffirming our love for the open road. Good morning, we are at Peggy's Cove. Julia stepped away for a second. You know, we don't record a lot at our hosts and people might ask, well, you're not you telling the story? But sometimes people don't feel comfortable around cameras and when you bring it out, it starts to become kind of artificial and people watch what they say. So I really like to keep the cameras away when I'm at people's houses. I get to know them in a natural setting and I kind of keep that stuff private. I don't need all that out and that's not what this is really about. Uh, meeting people and telling their stories, which I do, but you know, I just there needs to be a little element of privacy. And so this this trip is more about showing you our journey, showing the countryside, showing the routes, seeing what we see more than it is about uh, who we stay with and some more of the logistical stuff on that side. So I hope you guys understand. Julia I was just telling that we are at Peggy's Cove and what else do we need to know? How was the drive in? Uh, the drive was, it was pretty good. It's windy. I got stuck behind a car that wanted to do like 20 miles an hour the whole time. But you know, it's going to happen. But we're going to go fly our drone and look around Peggy's Cove. If you look on a map, it's south of Halifax. Uh, I don't know what highway this is. 
but just Google it. 102. 102. And then you go road 333 straight to the cove. Yeah. And we are going to go further south today, but we're not going to tell you about all that right now. Right now, let's go look at Peggy's Cove. This charming coastal village in Nova Scotia has a story that is rich as it is picturesque landscape. Peggy's Cove was born in 1811 when Nova Scotia granted land to six German descendant families. Fishing was their lifeblood and they made their mark here. By the early 1900s, the village had grown to around 300 residents and had its own school, church, general store, and even a lobster cannery. All right, this is what we're looking for. Not this is the cove, but that looks very, as they would say, picturesque. <sighs> so Julia gets to carry the tripod. I get to carry the backpack. The thing is, I wonder if they ever thought thousands of people would all of a sudden start coming here. The bad thing about tourism, not everybody, everybody wants just to come for the picture, which is our slogan. They don't really buy anything. They buy lunch or coffee or something small like that. As we approach Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, you can't help but feel the marine time charm. This iconic landmark has guided countless sailors through the treacherous waters. For sure, everything, everything is a picture spot, Julia. There's a walk on the black rocks. Well, luckily, yeah, and luckily we can't even get to them. Here we are on the rocks, the lighthouse. Julia, taking a picture. Right there. See? Nice. Wait, hold on. I didn't see it. Wait. Okay, I can't quite see it. There we go. We were warned do not walk on the black part of the rocks because it's slime and you'll slip and slide right down in the ocean. Never be seen again. I'm not sure you're a good swimmer. Should we go down there? Test our limits? The black rock? Come on, Yulier. Jump it. I remember there's water over here, so if don't fall there. Okay, good. All right. La da di. La di da. All right, Yulier, do you think we've seen the place? We've been here, we've experienced it. We have Peggy's Cove burnt in our mind. Definitely. It's nice to stay here for a moment and get that uh, ocean breeze. Mm -hmm. Get a second or two off the motorcycle. Julia's favorite thing. <laughs> Alright, we'll take a little stroll around and take some pictures with the lighthouse. Do you think we have enough pictures or should we take some more? I think we have enough because now we have people on our way and um, it's extra editing part. Yeah. Alright. Cue the drone. As we bid farewell to Peggy's Cove, we're embarking on a scenic journey along Nova Scotia's picturesque coastline.
The quaint houses nestled in charming coves tell us stories of a seafaring life. to Lunenburg and we just stop here for a quick drone shot. That's right. So we are in what's it called? Mahoney Bay. Mahoney Bay. So let me just say it. Cue the drone shot. So that's Mahoney's Bay. We're going to get back on the motorcycle and get down to our next city. Pick up lunch here in about 20, 30 minutes because uh, someone's little... Uh, it's more like 10, hopefully. Yeah, she's hungry. So we're going to get back on the motorcycle and head on down to our next little village. Welcome to Lunenburg. I'm right here. Uh, we stopped at a restaurant called... Uh, Something. Called, yes, you'll see down below. And we, we ordered our lunch with a perfect view. Obsessed with seafood right now. What'd you order, Julia? I ordered crispy salmon burger and fries. What I order? Fish and chips. Yes. But we're going to share everything, 100% for sure. Roman historic port of Lunenburg was truly a step back in time. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is a living testament to its marine time legacy, boasting charming 18th century architecture and cobblestone streets. But what really caught my eye were the colorful buildings that lined the waterfront creating a vibrant and picturesque backdrop. One captivating aspect is the town's association with the famous Blue Nose Two Schooner, a symbol of Canadians' faring excellence. This very port was the home base for this iconic vessel. Yet, what truly caught my curiosity was the enigmatic Lunenburg coin. It said that centuries ago, a mysterious coin was embedded in a building's foundation. The origins and significance of this artifact remain shrouded in mystery, making Lunenburg's history all the more intriguing. And did you know that the town's Old Town Lunenburg is featured on the Canadian dime? It's a nod to its vital role in Canada's seafaring heritage. enchanted town of Lunenburg behind, we are now on a mission to reach our destination near Waterloo, where our next host is awaiting our arrival. Is our host uh, taking us around their beautiful house which they just got done completing within the last year he is talking about Long Lake 
and the fish and everything that they have surrounding their home. They've been working tirelessly on remodeling and building a deck and they're talking about how they're looking to clear cut some of the treetops so they can have a beautiful picturesque view of the lake. Boy, being here really makes me think once again, why do I enjoy the city life? As we bid farewell to Nova Scotia, our journey from Waterloo to New Sydney took us through challenging weather. Relentless rain and bittering cold couldn't deter our spirits. By morning, the weather seemed to have hitched a ride into Newfoundland along with us. We battled 60 mile per hour crosswinds and relentless rain, but we had to press on. But as if on cue, the skies gradually brighten up as we trace the rugged coastline of Newfoundland the promise of new adventures back in. In the next episode of Taurus Journeys, we're diving deep into the vastness space of Newfoundland has to offer. More cold weather and awe-inspiring icebergs await. So don't miss out. Join us on our next chapter as we explore Canada's marine time coastline. It's going to be an unforgettable ride. All on the next Torres Journeys.